The Germans throughout World War II were known for developing revolutionary and different weapons of war, known as wonder weapons. Some of these include the feared V-1 rocket or the V-2, and also vehicles such as the ME-262 jet fighter or huge tanks such as the Mouse. However, one of the strangest weapons created by the Germans still has a significant amount of mystery that surrounds it. The Kugelpanzer is one of the most bizarre weapons ever created, and it's a one-man spherical tank. Join us today as we look at this strange vehicle, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. The Kugelpanzer was never seen in the European theatre during World War II, however it was captured by the Soviets in 1945, possibly in Manchuria. It was made by the Germans and was shipped to Japan, and only one today is known to exist, which can be found in the Kubinka Tank Museum in Russia, listed as item 37. The idea of a rolling or ball tank had been worked on before, with the Germans also trying to make a working prototype with the Treffswagen in 1917, which would have helped to deal with no man's land during World War I. The sole prototype is plated in 5mm of steel, and is rolled on rollers which are 1.5 metres in diameter. Inside the tank would have been a single crew member who sat on a motorbike style saddle, with the driver being able to peer out into the battlefield through a narrow viewing slit and being able to fire a single machine gun through a slot underneath the viewing port. A two-stroke 25 horsepower piston engine powered the Kugelpanzer and it was steered by a runner wheel on a tail extension which allowed the vehicle to become more stable. It's estimated though that the vehicle could only travel at a pace of 5 miles an hour. However, if you think about it, it's a rather interesting concept. Putting infantry men inside these small vehicles would have allowed them to have been pretty much protected from small arms fire, and they could have had some success at advancing towards an enemy. However, chances are that they could have been easily knocked out by anti-tank weaponry. 5mm of armour that protected it is decent enough for protection against small arms, however the huge target of the Kugelpanzer would have made it easy to spot and would have stuck out like a sore thumb. When we compare its armour to that of a common helmet such as the M1, the Kugelpanzer was much thicker and would have been sturdy enough to protect it from infantry fire, but not from explosives. There has been much debate about what the Kugelpanzer was actually intended to do, and also why on earth it ended up in Manchuria. At the Kubinka Tank Museum, it states how the tank was intended to be used as a reconnaissance vehicle and was used to gather intelligence and spy on the enemy. This would have made sense as a single machine gun port and the small amount of armour wouldn't have been a game changer on the battlefield, however the speed would have been a real issue. Reconnaissance vehicles need to be quick and agile to get out and into situations easily, but the Kugelpanzer didn't really have this at all. It's also suggested that it could have been used for artillery observation and also in the laying of cables. The problem with these theories is that no documentation has ever been found that outlines the Kugelpanzer's purpose in this sense, and none has ever been found that explains the vehicle in its design. One of the most common theories about the vehicle is that it was commissioned by the Japanese to take part in some of their kamikaze-style attacks or suicide missions. The kamikaze strategy is very well documented, but it took a much greater form of warfare than just aircraft crashing into naval ships, with kamikaze divers being trained, kamikaze ships being made and much more. Throughout most of the war, the idea of the kamikaze was considered voluntary, but as the situation for Japan became more dire, the Japanese high command were desperate for people to carry out these missions, and they used their unskilled personnel and obsolete machinery to try and make as much damage as possible. Some believe that the Kugelpanzer was used with this intent in mind, to almost act as a mobile bomb being driven towards an enemy. Firstly, like all the other kamikaze machines, it's rather small and was designed to operate with a very small crew, or a sole crew member of one. It wasn't really equipped with any specific offensive weapons too, as a machine gun would be easily removed if there was ever one meant to be inside it. The idea of it being designed for the Japanese for kamikaze attacks is debatable as said before. The large diameter wheel designed would have benefited from low ground pressure, and the centre of gravity would have allowed the Kugelpanzer to be good at climbing over vertical obstacles and traversing ditches. The vehicle though isn't the only example as mentioned earlier of a rolling tank. The Russians even made a 40 ton vehicle in 1915 called the Tsar tank. Overall though, the Kugelpanzer still remains a mystery today. Due to the fact there's no specific papers about the vehicle at all, outlining its design process or telling us about the point of what the vehicle was, Speculation of its purpose is the only thing people can do when debating it. 
is incredibly bizarre and would have been half decent during the First World War, with regards to crossing trenches or negotiating craters through no man's land in between the trench lines. It doesn't really fit into the Second World War, with quick and powerful vehicles needed to punch through an enemy's lines. For all we know it could have been the handiwork of a German mechanic, making a project in his back garden. However it could also have been passed from the Nazis to the Japanese at the end of the Second World War, as a way of seeing if the Japanese could find some use for it, as a conflict looked over in the European theatre. The Kugelpanzer definitely, today still remains a huge mystery. Once again thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.